in you, Jesus. You're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. We're trusting in you. You give us hope. This journey, there's no looking back. With Jesus to lead us, we're on the right track. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa. Wide open spaces for wide open eyes. We're looking ahead for the next big surprise. Oh, whoa. Gabriel Sunday School. Before we begin, let us start with a prayer. This is God, this is me, put together make us one. Bow our heads, close our eyes, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the God of love. You love us so much that you call each and every one of us to your presence. Right now, as we are about to receive your precious word, we pray for your spirit to fill our hearts. Help us to understand your word. We are learning about the wilderness journey. Father Lord, this is also our journey of faith that we need to take before we enter the kingdom of heaven. Help us to learn well. Help us to see your loving kindness, your mercy, and let us know that in this journey, you are always with us. We are, we are never alone. We want to commit this time all into Father's hand. In Jesus' name, we pray with full thanksgiving. Amen. So children, today we will be learning the seventh campsite. And this campsite is called the Wilderness of Sin. Now let us look at its location. Let's look at a map together. Alright, you have seen this map many times. This is the map of the Exodus and Wilderness Journey. So we all know that the Israelites camped 42 camps right before they reached the land of Canaan, the promised land. Today, we are learning the seven campsite, which is circled over here in purple color. This campsite is called the Wilderness of Sin. So let's see and find out what happened in this campsite. Let's go! So first, let us understand the meaning of the campsite name, Wilderness of Sin. The word sin here is not the English word sin that we know. But this is actually a Hebrew word sin and it means thorny bush, swampy land or clay. 
just like the picture that you see over here. So children, when do they arrive at this campsite? They arrive one month after Exodus and that is the first year, second month, 15th day as recorded in Exodus chapter 16 verse 1. So children, do you remember what year they came out of Egypt? You can find the answer in my slide over here. So Egypt, they came out of Egypt on 1446 BC on the first month, 15th day. And one month later, they arrived at this seventh campsite called the Wilderness of Sin. So they reached seventh campsite. The wilderness of sin on 1446 BC, second month, 15th day. So when they arrive at this campsite, which is one month later, all the food that they had ran out by now. They consume all the food that they brought up from Egypt. So now they are all hungry. If you are the Israelites, what would you do? Remember, they have experienced many miracles. From the first to the sixth campsite, remember the pillar of cloud and fire, the parting of the Red Sea, and the bitter water turned sweet for them? So if you are the Israelites, what would you do when now you have no food and you are hungry? Hmm. Hmm. I guess they would all pray together to ask God to provide them with food. Remember they experienced a lot of miracles such as God providing them with the pillar of cloud and fire to give them shelter and warmth and also God parted the Red Sea for them to cross on the dry land and how God turned the bitter water to sweet for them, right? But you know what, children? We humans are very forgetful. We tend to forget and take things for granted for the good things that happen in our life. So when, when they ran out of food, instead of praying, and believing that God will provide, they grumbled. And you know what, children? The words that they speak were very harsh, just like the meaning of this place. Thorns. Thorns are very pricky. They really prick the heart of God. Let's see what they say. Shall we all read Exodus chapter 16, verse 2 to 3 together? Exodus chapter 16, verse 2 to 3 together. Are you ready? One, two, three. And a whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Wow, hear what they say? They say God has brought them out into the wilderness to kill all of them with hunger. How do you feel if you are God after saving all these people out of Egypt and doing so many miracles for them? Now they say that you are going to kill them? God must, be have, God must have been so heartbroken, right, children? Feel the heart of God. Many a times, these Israelites are us. We are learning about this wilderness journey and the campsites because this is also our journey. This is our spiritual journey of faith before we enter the kingdom of heaven. Let us reflect upon ourselves and think. Do we forget about what God has blessed us with? And when we are faced with trouble, the first thing we do is it that we complain and grumble against God? Or do we come before God and give thanks and ask God for help? Let us not be like the Israelites who say such harsh words like thorns that prick the heart of God. Let us all change together. Amen. Yes, after hearing this word of the Israelites, our God, He is a very loving and merciful God. Instead of ignoring them, Okay, and got angry, our God notified them that he will rain bread from heaven for them. This is recorded in Exodus chapter 16 verse 4. So God notified them 
on the same day that they grumbled, which is on the 15th day of the second month. And he said that the next day he will rain down the manna. This is recorded in Exodus chapter 16 verse 13. I will read for you. Exodus chapter 16 verse 13 says, In the evening, quail came up and covered the land. And in the morning, dew lay around the camp. This dew is actually the manna. So we can see how God sent the quail as meat for them. And the next day morning, God sent manna, the bread from heaven, to come down. So we all know now that God notified them that he about the manna on the 15th day of the second month. And manna really came down the next day, which was the 16th day of the second month. So this manna solved the issue of hunger for the Israelites and it provided them strength to continue on throughout their entire journey. There is a specific way God wanted them to collect the manna. Remember, this wilderness journey is a journey of training to become the people of God. So this is a journey that we take to spiritually so that we are trained. We know the rules, the laws of God before we can become the citizens of heaven. So through the provisions of the manna, God wanted to train them on something. So now let's see what is God's instructions on this collection of manna. So firstly, they are to gather a day's portion each uh, every day and gather twice as much on the sixth day. Okay, let me read Exodus chapter 16 verse 4. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So how much each person per day? The answer is found in Exodus chapter 16, verse 16. Okay, it says, as I highlighted in red, it's one omer for each person according to the number of persons. So, one omer for each person, depending on the number of people in your family, you collect accordingly. Can they collect more and keep and say, uh, maybe tomorrow God will not rain down mana? I keep some, reserve some for tomorrow so I can still eat it. Can or not, children? The answer is, no. Okay, so second instruction that God mentioned is they cannot collect more and keep till the next day. Exodus 16 verse 19 says, And Moses said, Let no one leave any of it till morning. But as you know, like I just shared, we humans are a bit greedy and we like to think a lot. We think we save some for tomorrow just in case, just in case God stopped or God forgot to send mana down. Or maybe tomorrow I'm sick, I cannot go out and collect. At least I have some leftover to eat, right? So they did not listen to the word of Moses. So what happened to this mana? Exodus 16 verse 20 tells us clearly that the mana that they kept overnight bred worms and stank. So let us read together Exodus chapter 16 verse 20. Are you ready? One, two, three. Notwithstanding, they did not hit Moses. But some of them left part of it until morning and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. Yes. So like this, like this boy over here in the picture, he pressed his stomach because it's really so smelly. And can you see the worm on the leftover mana? Yeah. So you see, children, God is teaching us that we have to believe and trust in Him and obey 100% in His word. No point, really no point to use our human thoughts to try to save ourselves. Remember, God is our provider. He will provide our everyday needs. We just need to abide in His Word. Amen? Okay, so third part of the instruction is no collection on the Sabbath, which is the seventh day. Exodus chapter
chapter 16 verse 26 says, Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there will be none. So, now we all know why God gave them two days portion on the sixth day, like we say twice, right, on the sixth day, so that on the seventh day they can rest and no collection is needed. But you may be wondering, huh? Just now God just said we cannot keep, right? And remember when they didn't listen to Moses, they left over till the next day, it bread, worm and stank. Will this happen for the six day portion? Though I take twice the portion, but will it, will it bread, worm and then stank? Like what happened previously? Let's find out together. Exodus chapter 16 verse 23 to 24 says, then he said to them, This is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today, and boil what you will boil, and lay out for yourselves all that remains, to be kept until morning. So they laid it up till morning, as Moses commanded, and it did not stink, nor were there any worms on it. Right, so no worms on it, and the manna did not stink when they kept it from the sixth day, overnight to the seventh day amazing right yes so listen very carefully to the word of god and obey them 100 percent, and that will be right for us and that will be good for us all right okay so now let's do a recap on what was the rule again okay so on the first day how many portion one day portion right one oma for each person according to the number of the of the members in your family you collect accordingly one day portion second day how many portion also just one day portion third day also one day portion fourth day one day portion still fifth day still one day portion then come the sixth day. Sixth day, how many days portion, children? Remember, they are supposed to collect twice as many. So it's two days portion. They are supposed to collect for the sixth day itself and the seventh day. The seventh day is the Sabbath. And are they supposed to collect mana? None. That is why on the sixth day, God told them to collect two days portion. And on the seventh day, it's a rest day. Okay? So, from here we can see God used the mana to train his people to observe the Sabbath. Just like in God's creation, God worked six days and on the seventh day he rested. God wants us to remember Sabbath day is our Lord's day in today's term. Okay? And what are we supposed to do on this day? Do we work? Is, doing, is working your priority on the Sabbath day, on the Lord's day itself? No. Sabbath or Lord's day is the day whereby we worship God. When we worship God, that is when we receive the true rest, when God is with us. Right, children? God wants us to remember this. Put Him first. Okay? So six days, you see, you can work. But on the seventh day, you rest, you come to me, worship me. All right? So this is the training. So in conclusion, manna, the bread of heaven, was provided to the Israelites throughout this wilderness journey from the seventh campsite, which is on the first year, second month, 16th day, to the 41st year, first month, 15th day. It, the manna actually rained down for a total of 39 years and 11 months. Wow! It's really a long time, right, children? It's not one day, it's not two days, it's not three days. But we see that God provided them this manna throughout this journey. 39 years and 11 months. See how our God is with them throughout? Providing them their food daily. In the wilderness journey. Remember in the wilderness, desert, no food. God is the provider. So don't worry, children. Just believe in God knowing that He is with you and He will provide you this manner. Amen. Secondly, God commanded that each Israelite's house kept one omer of manna and they took one omer in a jar and kept it in the ark. 
This is recorded in Exodus chapter 16, verse 32 to 34. Why do God has to command them to keep this? Why? The reason is simple. God wanted them to remember His provision and to keep the Sabbath. Remember, God is the provider. Don't worry about anything. Just believe in Him. He will provide. And when you come to worship Him on Lord's Day, God knows you are not working. He will definitely pay you back for that. He has already given you in advance many things and God will provide. This is what God wants us to believe in. Amen. Thirdly, the manna was provided throughout this wilderness journey. Today, as I mentioned earlier, the wilderness journey is our journey of faith. We too need to go through this journey. And in this journey, we will get hungry, just like the Israelites. We need this spiritual manna to give us strength and solve our issue of hunger spiritually. So who is this manna from heaven for us? This manna from heaven, the bread from heaven, is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember Jesus came down from heaven for us? Yes, Jesus Christ is our spiritual manna that solves the issue of hunger for our spirit and body. Let us read John chapter 6 verse 48 to 51 together as our concluding verse. John chapter 6 verse 48 to 51. Are you ready? 1, 2, 3. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Yes, children. Jesus Christ is the living bread that we need to have. When we have him in us, we will have eternal life just as he had promised. So let's believe well in Jesus in this journey till we enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Now let us end with a prayer. Let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. Thank you so much for your precious word today. This wilderness journey is also our journey of faith. Let us look at this journey that the Israelites have done. Let us reflect upon our own life. We see how, Father, you are the provider. How, from the start till the end, you have always been with the Israelites. And we believe you are also always with us, Father God. Help us to believe in you well. Let us remember Jesus Christ is the living bread. It's the bread that we need. It's the bread that will be with us throughout. When we have Jesus, there is no more worry. There is no more hunger. Let us believe in you well. Let us be diligent in learning your word and know your heart and know you and abide in you always. We want to commit our life all into Father's hand. Thank you so much for everything, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray with full thanksgiving. Amen. Bye-bye, children. Now, let us recite the Lord's Prayer to end the service. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy work will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.